In this video, we'll show you how to take your Laravel development skills to the next level by mastering Eloquent, Laravel's powerful ORM. Tip number one, use eager loading to reduce the number of database queries and improve performance. Eager loading allows you to load related models in a single query, rather than making separate queries for each related model. This can significantly improve the performance of your application, especially when dealing with large datasets. So in this example we will use eager loading to get all the posts with their comments while there is a has many relationship between them, so we will use the with method and inside of it we will write the name of our relationship let's say comments, and then we will chain the get method to it. Tip number two, take advantage of query scopes to make your code more readable and maintainable. Query scopes allow you to define reusable query constraints that can be applied to any query for a given model. This can make your code more readable and maintainable, as well as reducing the amount of code duplication. So let's first go to our post model and make a new public function and let's call it scope published, and let's make it take a query parameter, then inside of it we will make it return the query where published equals true, and in our controller we will just call the post model and then the published method and chain the get method to it, and now we will only get the posts that are published. Tip number three. Use polymorphic relationships to associate a single model with multiple other models. Polymorphic relationships allow you to create a single relationship that can be used to associate a model with multiple other models. This can be very useful in many situations, such as when you have a comments table that can be associated with both posts and videos, so in this example in the comment model we will make a new function called commentable and it will return this morph to, and now in our post model. We will make a new function called comment and it will return morph many. And inside of it we will choose the comment model and the second argument will be the name of the relationship which is commentable. And in our controller we will find the post that we want to add the comment to, and then we can save it using the relationship. Tip number 4. Use accessors and mutators to manipulate model attributes before they are saved or retrieved. Accessors and mutators allow you to manipulate model attributes before they are saved to the database or retrieved from the database. This can be very useful for formatting data, such as formatting a full name attribute from separate first and last name attributes. So now in the user class we will define a new function and let's name it get full name attribute, and inside of it we will return the first and last name separated by a space, and then we will define a new function let's call it set full name attribute. So now when you access the full name attribute on a user model, the get full name attribute method is automatically called to retrieve the formatted value. Tip number 5, use the where has method to filter results based on the existence of related models. The where has method allows you to retrieve only the models that have at least one related model that meets certain criteria. For example, if you have a post model that has many comment models, you can use the where has method to retrieve only the posts that have at least one approved comment. Tip number six, use the with count method to retrieve the count of related models. The WITHCOUNT method allows you to retrieve the count of related models without actually loading them. This can be useful if you just need to know the count of related models and don't need to load them into memory. For example, if you have a post model that has many comment models, you can use the with count method to retrieve the count of comments for each post. Tip number seven, use the chunk method to process large datasets in smaller, more manageable chunks. The chunk method allows you to retrieve and process large datasets in smaller, more manageable chunks. This can be useful if you have a large dataset that you need to process, but don't want to load the entire dataset into memory at once. For example, if you have a post model with thousands of records, you can use the chunk method to retrieve and process the records in batches of 200. Tip number 8, use the tap method to modify a model instance without changing its state. The tap method allows you to modify a model instance and return it without changing its state. This can be useful if you need to modify a model instance, but don't want to save the changes to the database yet. For example, if you have a post model instance and you want to modify its title, you can use the tap method to modify the instance and return it without saving the changes to the database. Tip number 9, 
use the replicate method to create a new instance of a model with the same attributes. The replicate method allows you to create a new instance of a model with the same attributes as the original instance. This can be useful if you need to create a new instance of a model with the same attributes as an existing instance, but with a different ID or other attributes. For example, if you have a post model instance and you want to create a new instance with the same attributes, you can use the replicate method to create the new instance and then save it to the database. And for our last tip, the first or create method allows you to retrieve the first model that matches a set of attributes, or create a new model if no matching model is found. This can be useful if you need to retrieve a specific model based on certain attributes, but also want to create a new model if no matching model is found. For example, if you have a user model and you want to retrieve a user with the email address john at example.com, you can use the first or create method to retrieve the user if they exist, or create a new user with the name John Doe and a password of password if no matching user is found. You can also use the update or create method to update the first model that matches a set of attributes, or create a new model if no matching model is found. This can be useful if you need to update a specific model based on certain attributes, but also want to create a new model if no matching model is found. If you like this video and want more Laravel content please like and subscribe.